Okay, so imagine this. You've got this amazing microgreen setup, right? Everything is perfect, but you're basically flying blind because your greenhouse is a total Wi-Fi dead zone. Today, we're gonna solve that exact problem. We're gonna build a smart wireless sensor network using the magic of the ESP32, even when your internet connection is totally MIA. All right, let's lay out the game plan. First, we'll talk about the core problem every grower faces. Then, we'll meet our tiny little hero, the ESP32, and its secret weapon. We'll look at two super cool ways to get these devices talking to each other, figure out how to get that data online, and then wrap it all up with why this whole approach is such a game changer. So, let's really set the scene here. You've got all these trays of super delicate microgreens, and they need really specific conditions to grow well. But, you're immediately up against a classic and super frustrating tech problem. To get those perfect, healthy greens, you absolutely need to know what's going on in there. We're talking about real-time data. What's the temperature? The humidity? How much light are they getting? Is the soil too wet, too dry? This isn't just nice to have, it's totally essential. And you know, it's not enough to just measure one little corner. The spot by the door is probably a little cooler, and that back row might not be getting as much light. You need sensors dotted all over the place to get the real picture of what's happening. And here it is, the wall. That metal framing, the sheer distance from your house, your Wi-Fi router just isn't going to cut it. It can't cover the whole area. So all those sensors out in the far corners, they're effectively offline, totally unable to send you their precious data. Which, of course, brings us to the big question. How in the world do you collect all that data from these isolated spots and get it online without running a crazy amount of cables or buying a bunch of expensive Wi-Fi extenders? Well, the answer lies in this tiny but mighty hero. It's a versatile and, best of all, a really low-cost microcontroller. So let's meet the ESP32 and uncover the secret that makes this whole thing possible. Now, if you haven't played with one of these before, the ESP32 is an absolute powerhouse on a tiny little chip. Seriously, it's a full-on computer that you can program to read sensors, control things, and, most important for us, talk to other devices wirelessly. But here's the real magic, its secret weapon, the 2.4 gigahertz radio. Now the same bit of hardware it uses for regular old Wi-Fi and Bluetooth can be used for something else. It can create its own private local network. This lets all the ESP32s talk directly to each other, completely bypassing your Wi-Fi router. So how do they actually do that? How do they talk? Let's check out our first method called ESP Now. It is a super fast, simple protocol that'll get our sensors chatting in basically no time at all. ESP Now is purpose-built for sending little packets of data, up to 250 bytes, which is way more than enough for our temperature and humidity readings. Think of it like a set of walkie-talkies for your electronics. It's direct, it's simple, and it's really, really efficient. And this really shows you the key difference. With your normal Wi-Fi, every single device has to connect to that one central router. It's like a hub and spoke. But ESP now just cuts out the middleman entirely. The devices form their own little private club and talk directly to each other. So for our greenhouse, the perfect setup is what we call a mini-to-one model. It's simple. You have a bunch of sensor nodes, the initiators, that wake up, take a quick reading, and then beam that data over to a single central master node, the responder. Now, ESP now is fantastic, it really is, but what if your greenhouse is really big? Or what if you've got a bunch of metal shelves that block the signal? Well, for those more complex situations, we can level up to a full-blown mesh network. ESP mesh is kind of like creating a digital bucket brigade. It's so cool. If one sensor can't reach the master node directly, it doesn't just give up. It passes its message to a neighbor, who then passes it to their neighbor, and so on, until it reaches its destination. This extends the range like crazy and makes it super reliable. And you know, the best part, and this is straight from Espressive's own documentation, is that the network is self-organizing and self-healing. It basically manages itself. If a node loses power or you unplug it, the mesh just automatically finds a new route for the data. You don't have to do anything. It's incredibly robust. Okay, so we've built this amazing local network. It's collecting all our greenhouse data using either ESP Now or this awesome ESP Mesh. But right now, that data is kind of trapped. So how do we get it out into the world so we can check it on our phone from anywhere? And here it is. This is the most elegant, most brilliant part of this entire solution. 
you only need one of those nodes to have an internet connection. Just one. A single ESP32 has to be in range of your Wi-Fi router, and it can act as the gateway for the entire network. So let's just trace the data's journey from start to finish. First, the sensors broadcast their readings locally. Then, our special gateway node listens in and collects everything. That gateway connects to your home Wi-Fi, and then it pushes all that consolidated data up to a remote server, and from there, you can see it on a dashboard or in an app, anywhere in the world. All right, let's just step back for a second and look at the big picture here. Why is this hybrid approach, this local network with a single gateway, so unbelievably effective for something like our smart greenhouse project? Well, the benefits are just huge. First off, it is so cost-effective. These ESP32 boards are super cheap. It's scalable. If you want to add another sensor, you just add it and it joins the network automatically. It's incredibly reliable, especially if you use a mesh. And the infrastructure is just beautifully simple. No crazy wiring and only one single point of contact with your existing Wi-Fi. And that really is the most exciting part, isn't it? We solved our greenhouse problem, but this exact same architecture, you could apply it almost anywhere. I mean, think about monitoring a huge workshop or a multi-story house or even a network of outdoor environmental sensors. The possibilities, they're really endless.